Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shailesh MP, neurosurgeon from Sakra World Hospitals. Today, we'll be discussing about carotid artery disease or carotid artery stenosis. So, how do we diagnose a carotid artery disease? Once the patient has presented to us with the initial symptoms of developing a stroke, we'll have to screen them by doing an ultrasound duplex Doppler of the carotids, which can pick up the narrowing of the carotid vessels. Further, should be evaluated with an MRI brain to rule out strokes and a CT NGO of the neck to rule out where exactly the carotid artery is narrowed, whether the plaque is a soft plaque or a calcified plaque. Once the diagnosis of carotid artery stenosis is made, the extent of block, whether it, if it is less than 50%, conservative management using blood thinners, anti-cholesterol agents, regular exercise, diet modification is sufficient enough to prevent further risk of stroke. Also, management of diabetes, hypertension and cardiac uh, diseases have to be kept in mind while treating a patient conservatively. When the blockage is more than 50%, up to 99% and the patient is symptomatic, we will have to intervene. There are two major surgical options which are available. One is the carotid artery stenting, which is reserved for elderly people, those who cannot undergo a major surgery. So in such situation, the gold standard treatment for a carotid occlusive disease is carotid endarterectomy, where an incision is made in the front of the neck, approach to the carotid artery is gained and the common carotid and the internal carotid arteries are clamped temporarily. The carotid arteries are opened up, the muck, the plaque and the cholesterol depositions are cleared off from the carotid artery to re-establish the blood flow to the brain. Once this is done, the clamps are removed and the arteries are sutured so that there is no further leak of blood which is confirmed uh, <clears throat> by doing a leak test. Following the carotid endarterectomy, the patient uh, <clears throat> is carefully monitored for development of any further stroke during the immediate perioperative period. Also, such patients have a risk for developing myocardial infarction in the immediate postoperative period. After uh, the initial 24 to 48 hours have gone by and the patient is completely fine, by day 1 or day 2, the patient can be discharged safely. Patient has to be continuing his antiplatelet medications and cholesterol medications for rest of his life and have a uh, steady follow-up with the neurosurgeon or the neurologist. Thank you.